Hey everybody, I'm Brian Mead and today I'm going to um, help you uh, with Insectors. Um, this is a deck I've been running for a while and I hope I can help you beat me. Uh, the first thing to look at, of course, is the Insector Monsters. Alright, to begin with, Insectors can be broken down into four main groups. The first group is the group that can uh, equip cards from the hand or graveyard and gets an effect when those cards are sent from the equipped position to the graveyard. This includes Insector Centipede, which you'll see pretty much everybody run at 3, and Insector Dragonfly, which you'll see everybody run at 3. Um, these are kind of the main engine for the deck. Next you have the group of cards that equips cards from the hand or graveyard uh, to them, but also gets effects when sent from the uh, back row from the equipped position to the graveyard. So that includes Insector Hornet, Insector Ladybug, and Insector Hopper, which people will still run occasionally. Third group is the group that includes Insector Gigamantis. Gigamantis can equip itself with its own effect um, from the hand right to the uh, Insector monster. So even if your Insector Dragonfly was Effect Valor, the Gigamantis does have the ability to come from the hand and equip right to that Insector monster and boost its original attack to 24. In the same grouping, but very uh, not used nearly as much, is Insector Giga Cricket. This one can remove a uh, insect monster in your graveyard and equip to an insector monster and make that insector monster's original attack 2000. Final group is the one that includes the Xyz monsters and these are the Exes. Uh, the insector Exes don't have an ability that will equip a card uh, for an insector card straight from your graveyard to them, but they do have other abilities to take your opponent's cards and equip your opponent's cards to them, and uh, kind of similar to a relinquish, and then they will gain attack points based on the uh, monsters that they steal. Now on to the support for the insector deck. For starters, when it comes to support, we have Insector Sword Zeta Caliber, and this is probably the most useful. Uh, non-monster insector card there is. Um, this is a huge part of the combo that leads to OTKs. Uh, we'll get into that in a minute. Um, if you can't afford the insector swords, the insector hawk, which is the axe, is uh, a nice option to go with. It'll boost your monsters by a thousand as opposed to the 800 that this will give. And um, the insector hawk will also allow you to attack freely during the battle phase without fear of a mirror force or a deep prison. On to monsters that are really good to use with insectors. Um, first, Tour Guide from the Underworld is awesome to use with insectors. This can search out your Sangren, which will then search out pretty much anything in the deck, as well as um, just you can use Tour Guide to search for other Tour Guides and or even a Tour Bus and um, make really easy uh, rank threes and your extra deck will be full of rank threes. Uh, another level 3 that's really useful is Card Trooper. Um, Card Trooper lets you mill cards so then you can get your Hornets and your uh, Ladybugs in the graveyard faster. And even if you get a Dragonfly or a uh, Centipede in there, you don't really mind too much because of the combos. Um, Dark Home Dragon is great to use in Insectors because uh, Insector Monsters can bring each other back out of the graveyard, which means you can really easily control your graveyard. and uh, I really enjoy using Black Cluster Soldier on the beginning in there. Pretty much everybody, including myself, runs effect bailers, which are lights. And I can get two lights in my extra deck if I need to pretty easily, so I don't have a problem bringing him out. On to the extra deck. Now, um, obviously, this is the best Xyz monster um, rank 3 wise that's that's out there. Wind of Zen Man is um, amazing, can't be destroyed if you remove uh, one of the materials that's overlaid and it is a rank 3 so obviously we have tons of rank, uh, level 3's in the deck to make easy rank 3's. Um, it also has the ability to pop an opponent's card uh, if you use its other effect to uh, to save it from destruction but this card is um, kind of on the pricey end so here are some other options. Um, a little less expensive. Levier the Sea Dragon is an amazing rank 3 for uh, 
this deck because if you use cards like Allure Darkness or that Dark Arm Dragon that we were talking about, um, you can remove your insect insectors from play. And if you do something like it, remove a dragon five from play, this can lead to just tons of loops. Um, obviously, I pretty much everybody runs number seventeen Leviathan. I really like running number twenty Giga Brilliant. This is a light, which makes it really easy for me to pull out my uh, envoy. And number thirty. S Golem of Destruction is wonderful in here because uh, it's just a nice beater at 3,000. Um, you're going to want to make sure you bring this out at the end though because you can't special summon if you have him on the field. As for rank 5s, um, I really want to just encourage everybody to use this guy. This is number 12, um, Crimson Armor Shadow Ninja, and if you remove an Xyz material from him, uh, no mo ninja monsters that you can be you control can be destroyed that turn by battle or by card effect. He is a ninja. I get a lot of flack for that, but he, it does say ninja right there in his, in his name, and so his effect will work on himself. Uh, you could use Adreus. I personally like Tyrus just because, once again, I'm doing the Chaos Engine, so that's why I have Tyrus in here. Tyrus is a rank 5. You, can, uh, you have to give up one from her every turn, but she can do a lot of damage. She has 2,600 attack points. She's wonderful. Um, Obviously, I have the other uh, Insector Xyz in here, but because I have so many uh, rank 5s and the ability to pump up my monsters with um, Insector uh, Ladybug, I really like Gaia Dragon, the Thunder Charger, just as kind of like an endgame beater if they try and get stuck behind a, you know, something like a Marshmallow or a um, Spirit Reaper. On to the combos. Now understanding these combos is going to be a key if you want to defeat an Insector deck. So the first thing that you got to always watch out for is the Insector Dragonfly. And this is the first big combo that Insector players are going to want to go for. So Dragonfly will equip hopefully the Hornet. And if they don't have the Hornet, they're going to go for the Insector Ladybug or even possibly the uh, Insector Hopper if they, if they play those. But more than likely it's going to be the Hornet because it's going to be run at 3. By sacking off the Hornet, they're going to be able to destroy one of your cards, and they're going to be able to special summon one from their deck, hopefully. So they're going to be looking for this Insector Centipede. Insector Centipede's effect will let them bring that Hornet back from the graveyard and equip to the Centipede. They'll then send that to hopefully destroy one of your cards again, and then they get to search out a card for Centipede's effect, so they'll bring another Dragonfly to their hand. So here's the big death combo. This is the combo that you need to really watch out for because it can do huge amounts of damage. Alright, first, once again, the Insector Dragonfly. Because it can special summon cards from the deck, it's extremely dangerous. Next, they're going to activate the Insector Dragonfly's effect. And this is where they're really going to be watching to see if you have something like a Fiendish Chain or an Effect Vanilla. If you don't, here comes that Hornet. And they'll bring the Hornet back from the graveyard, they'll bring it from their hand. Okay, next they're going to activate the Insector Swords out of Calibre and they're going to equip it right to that right to that Dragonfly, okay? This means that when they sack off the Hornet, they can go after their own card. Pop. And a couple of things are going to happen. First of all, in the graveyard, we're going to have our Insector Swords out of Calibre's effect activate, which means we can bring an Insector monster that's already been used back to our hand, which is great. Next, um, the Dragonfly had two cards equipped to it. And because of how these cards left, first the Hornet left, activating the effect, destroyed this, activating the effect. So this is actually going to special summon two monsters for us. As long as they're not uh, Dragonflies, we're okay. So we're going to special summon two copies of Insector Centipede. Okay. By using Centipede's effect, we can go ahead and get, once again, we can get that Hornet back out of our graveyard. Right there. And we'll send it to the graveyard. Boom! All right. Now, by sending this to the graveyard, we have a couple of choices in what we get. We can either get our Gigamantis, or we can get an uh, Insector Sword. But personally, I like to go ahead and get the Gigamantis at this point. So by bringing Gigamantis to my hand, now I can activate the Gigamantis in hand, and equip it to the Dragonfly, and boost my Dragonfly's attack, but I don't really care about that, because now I'm going to use this other Centipede to bring that Hornet back one more time. And now I'm going to use Hornet's effect to pop my own uh, Gigamantis. And this means 
that I can search a card out for Centipede. I can special summon one from my graveyard for the Gigamantis. And I can special one from my deck for the Dragonfly. So right there, I'm already like, all right, I'm going to bring the Centipede that was in my graveyard back. And I am going to special summon, um, you know, the Dragonfly. So maybe I bring out uh, a Hornet that's left in my deck. And then Centipede is going to let me search. And now, because I haven't gotten it already, I can go ahead and get that Zeta Caliber. And now I can do something really nasty, like equip that Zeta Caliber back onto uh, my Dragonfly. And I have cards, I have, you know, Insector cards that have already used their effects, like this Centipede and this Centipede. So I'll just go ahead and overlay these bad boys and bring out a rank 3, well, say Leviathan, just for giggles. Uh, boost up my Leviathan's attack, sending that to the graveyard. Now I'm going to use this Insector Hornet back over here, and I can bring out maybe another Insector Hornet from my graveyard, or an Insector Hornet from my hand, or wherever it is. And by popping, once again, that Insector Sword, I'm allowed to bring an Insector Monster back which means I can get my Gigamantis back to hand. I can also search out another one from my deck, which means I can go get yet another sword. Maybe I go get another Dragonfly. Maybe I get Hopper. Maybe I get Ladybug. I can get whatever I want. I can continue to overlay and exceed. Um, and this is that's the combo right there. That's the one you got to watch out for. All right, so enough of looking at how they beat us. Let's look at how to beat them. How do you beat Insectors? Well, this is the first card right here, Skill Drain. It's a wonderful way to pay a thousand life points and get the effect of all the monsters in the field. And let's face it, if your Insector monsters don't have effects, they can't equip cards from their hand or graveyard, which means they can't start popping your stuff off. That's number one. Here are some other options, too. All right. As far as the side deck goes, Chain Disappearance. This bad boy will let you take out a monster that is summoned that has a thousand attack or less. That includes the dragonfly, the hornet, and a ladybug. And if you can hit any one of these guys, you'll remove every copy in, uh, in the deck from play. And that can make it really hard for insector players to pull off their combo. However, watch out if you use this card because if they are beast with levier and if they run more than one levier in their extra deck, uh, Chain Disappearance can actually come back to bite you really, really hard. Um, and next, in the same way that uh, Skill Drain's awesome, Shadow Imprisoning can be even better. Because we don't have to pay any life points, it'll stop the effects of the Insectors, and um, if we're not running a dark deck, then Shadow Imprisoning won't uh, be hurting us hardly at all. If your deck can support it, Macrocosmos can really screw up an Insector deck because the effects of things like Hornet activate in the graveyard, and if they're not in the graveyard, they can't be brought back, and their effects cannot activate there. Once again, if your deck can support it, a really good card to use against Insectors is actually King Tiger Wangu. Uh, King Tiger Wangu will automatically destroy almost any Insector monster, and if you combine King Tiger with the amazing use of Bottomless Trap Hole, now that uh, there's no more priority, that'll take out the Centipedes, and the King Tigers will take out everything else. That can pretty much get you game right there. Um, as far as the main deck goes, Solemn Warnings, if you still run them in your main deck, as long as you can stop the uh, the initial searches, you can you can really shut down Insector players. Um, but this costs a lot of life points, and usually you won't get it uh, to stop every loop that you need. Um, so let's see what else we got. Effect Veiler, obviously, pretty much everybody runs this card at two, if not three, in their deck, and uh, you would, you wait until they declare that they're going to use the effect, and then you boom, discard the Effect Veiler, and that'll stop um, whatever nastiness that they're waiting to inflict on you. In the same category, Forbidden Chalice and um, Forbidden Chain can both go in the main deck. Um, if you like, and these are both really, really good cards. Um, Forbidden Chalice, once again, will negate the effect, just like the effect Baylor, and so will Phoenix Chain, so as long as you're stopping the effects of the Insector Monsters, they won't get to go off. Because you do have so many options, like the Phoenix Chain, the Chain Disappearance, the Solemn Morning, the Bottomless Trap Hole, the Macrocosmos, the Shadow Imprisoning there, you should expect that by Duel 2, you're going to see the Insector players siding in the Decrees, because 
they can pop their own decrees with hornets and get their traps to, traps to be active again, but if you have something like a shadow imprisoning... Okay, I hope that, um, I hope that helps you out. I hope you guys can beat Insectors now, and I hope it doesn't bring the hate that it has been bringing, because I love these little guys and I'm abusing them for a while. Until next time.